Have you heard the latest news? Pope Francis has made a startling announcement that has everyone talking. Could this be the revelation we've all been waiting for about the Antichrist? This news sends shockwaves worldwide and you won't believe what he says. So let's dive into this video today to uncover the details of Pope Francis's shocking revelation. Jesus called the devil a liar and the father of lies. This we all know. But did you know that the devil is such a liar that he wants to imitate God himself? Recently, many people have been pointing to Jared Kushner as a possible candidate for the Jewish Messiah or the Christian Antichrist. Theologians, rabbis, and esotericists claim that Donald Trump's son-in-law has all the elements to become the supreme world leader mentioned in biblical prophecies. Between Israel and Palestine, there is a global peace and security plan with an official slogan. This slogan has been incorporated into one propaganda since 2020. According to biblical prophecies, the Antichrist will sit on the temple's throne in Jerusalem and exert his power. This event is known as the abomination of desolation for this to happen. The temple must be rebuilt. Kushner has said that rebuilding the temple will be his priority after signing the peace agreement. In 2017, Kushner convinced Netanyahu and the former president to move Israel's capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. With the power received from Satan, the Antichrist will prosper, causing the ruin of many. He will seek to destroy God's chosen people and spread the deception of a false religion. His vanity will make him believe that he can defeat Jesus Christ, but in the end he will be annihilated. Orthodox Jews believe we are in the Messianic times, the days leading up to the appearance of the Jewish Messiah. For Christians, the Antichrist could come from Europe or the Middle East. For Israelis, the Messiah they await must be Jewish. Jared Kushner, born in the United States, has Jewish ancestry, giving him some credibility among the children of Israel. He seems to be the perfect man to be an intermediary in signing peace between Israel and Arab peoples. Kushner owns building number 6666 on Fifth Avenue in New York, which has been the subject of controversy. The Kushner company acquired it in 2006 for $1.8 billion. The 1957 building is located in a prime area of Manhattan, almost opposite St. Patrick's Cathedral and near Rockefeller Center. Jared bought the building from the now-deceased David Rockefeller, a great leader of the Illuminati Lodge. The building also hosts a company manufacturing microchips and semiconductors. Another curious fact about Kushner is that between 2009 and 2016, he registered to vote as a female. This may reference the man of sin described in Daniel 1137, who says he will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the one desired by women given so many prophetic events in recent years. The end times seem to be beginning discreetly a charismatic and seductive global leader with agreements, ideas, and brilliant solutions. Manifest his influence worldwide, the Antichrist's emergence, the scriptures reveal that a figure known as the son of perdition, the desolator, the man of sin, the beast, or the Antichrist will appear in the final era, despite this God's word indicates that his appearance is being delayed by the action of the Holy Spirit and the Church. However, when the Antichrist reveals himself to the world, he will dominate the entire earth. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, we find clues about the Antichrist's origin. While I was thinking about the horns, there was another horn, a little one which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. The vision in Daniel chapter 7 mentions four beasts symbolizing dominant empires, the Babylonian Empire, the medo persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. According to the scriptures, a little horn will arise from the fourth beast, indicating that the Antichrist will emerge from the Roman Empire. The ancient Roman Empire encompassed what we now know as the Middle East, parts of Europe and North Africa. Therefore, the nationality of the Antichrist suggests he must originate from one of these regions. The Apostle John also describes the beast in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast with ten horns symbolizes the empire governed by the Antichrist, while the little horn represents the Antichrist himself. The ten horns symbolize ten kings who will give their power to the Antichrist, allowing him to rule. 
both the Antichrist and these nations must emerge from the ancient Roman Empire. Europe and the Middle East are gaining strength in economic, political, and social terms compared to the declining relevance of the United States. To delve deeper into the nationality of the Antichrist, we will examine Daniel chapter 8, starting from verse 7. It attacked the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering its two horns. The ram could not stand against it. The goat knocked it to the ground and trampled on it, and none could rescue the ram from its power. This passage describes a confrontation between a ram and a goat, where the ram symbolizes the Medo Persian Empire and the goat symbolizes the Greek Empire. Today, the territory of the Persian Empire corresponds to Iran, and it is highlighted that victory was granted to the empire of Alexander the Great, represented by the goat. In verse 8, it states the goat became very great, and, but at the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place, four prominent horns grew up toward the four winds of heaven. This reveals that a division occurred within the ancient Roman Empire after the Greek Empire's victory over Persia, resulting in four distinct geographical regions. Egypt, Syria, Macedonia, and Turkey. Alexander the Great, the Greek ruler, designated a general for each of these divisions. Thus, each general governed one of these regions. Advancing further, verse 9 reveals, out of one of them came another horn, which started small but grew in power to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land. This indicates that the Antichrist will arise among the followers. We are going to be discussing four geographical regions under the Greek Empire's dominion. To identify the specific region, we turn to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 12. When the Lord has finished all his work against M.T., Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the haughty look in his eyes. This context points to events occurring after the Lord's mission in M.T. Zion and Jerusalem prophesied for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the king of Assyria mentioned in the scriptures is identified as the Antichrist, who will be annihilated by Jesus through the sword from his mouth. This suggests that the Antichrist will be of Syrian origin. To reinforce this, Isaiah chapter 30 states, The voice of the Lord will shatter Assyria. With his rod he will strike them down. This parallels Paul's Paul's prophecy in Thessalonians, where the Antichrist falls before the word of Jesus, symbolized by the sword from Jesus' mouth. The second characteristic focuses on the Antichrist's close ties with individuals, especially in Islamic countries. Daniel chapter 7 tells us, After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth, it crushed and devoured its victims, and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and had ten horns. These ten horns represent a coalition of ten nations or kings from the ancient Roman Empire who will give their power to the beast for world domination. The Middle East, as the heart of the Islamic world, offers clues. This region, the cradle of Islam intertwines with apocalyptic prophecies. Muslims await a Messiah known as the Mahdi who, according to their faith, is the Messiah. Will restore Islam as the true religion, subjugate the Jews and rule over all nations. The scriptures suggest that the Antichrist will accept Islam and proclaim himself as the last Islamic Messiah. He will manage to subdue nations by consolidating Islamic countries, presenting himself as a master in the art of war and weapons. The third characteristic of the Antichrist involves his Jewish ancestry, which raises controversy. Despite diverse interpretations, a clear understanding of the scriptures reveals that the Antichrist must have Jewish ancestry. This is reinforced in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. He opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. This suggests the need to rebuild the Temple of Jerusalem, which requires a mediator capable of negotiating with both Arabs and Jews. Given that one of Islam's holiest sites, the Dome of the Rock, stands where the Temple of Jerusalem once was, there the Antichrist must be able to access the Temple. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. 
subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right, let's keep rolling. Foreigners have been prohibited from entering, which would not apply to a Jew. Thus, the Antichrist must be of Jewish descent. Daniel chapter 11 verse 37 states, He shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. This indicates indifference towards the god of the Hebrews. The fourth characteristic is the Antichrist's dual nature as both spirit and person. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 18 explains, Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. Although many Antichrists have appeared denying Christ's divinity, the scriptures clarify that the Antichrist will have both physical and spiritual manifestations. The primary reason for restricting the Antichrist's manifestation is to allow people to seek God and prepare the way for divine judgment. Scripture assures us that believers are not destined to suffer God's wrath. Despite deserving it for our sins, God offers salvation and believers are taken away, after which God's judgment begins to manifest fully. This period of divine judgment spans the last 3.5 years of Daniel's final week, during which devastation strikes the earth. The Antichrist arises in this context of desolation, promising peace and security amidst wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, and other end-time signs. The Antichrist's facade and true intentions. After the rapture of the church, the Antichrist will abandon his facade of peace, marking a new phase of tribulation and challenge. Initially presenting himself as a bringer of peace and security, he, he will eventually reveal his true intentions causing deep fear as he establishes his empire, as described in the book of Daniel. This duality, presenting a false peace while harboring malevolent intentions, is crucial to understanding the Antichrist's role in nature. To understand the spiritual dynamics, we compare the mysteries of godliness and iniquity as revealed in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. The mystery of godliness involves Christ's divine manifestation, while the mystery of iniquity pertains to the Antichrist's wicked work. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 states, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in in the world, taken up in glory. This passage outlines the divine ministry of Jesus Christ, emphasizing His incarnation, spiritual justification, and global proclamation. In contrast, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. This passage highlights the ongoing influence of iniquity, ultimately personified in the Antichrist, who will be destroyed by Christ's return. The Antichrist embodies both a spirit and a physical manifestation. Throughout history, the spirit of the Antichrist has consistently denied Christ's divinity and sonship. The tangible representation of Satan, the Antichrist, will manifest in flesh, be condemned in spirit, and ultimately face divine punishment. He will initially deceive many by offering false peace and security, presenting himself as a solution to global chaos but will ultimately reveal his true nature. The Antichrist's Jewish ancestry is significant for his acceptance among Jews and Muslims. His ability to negotiate access to the Temple Mount, a holy site for both Jews and Muslims, indicates he must be of Jewish descent. Daniel chapter, double 137 states, he shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers or to the one beloved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all, this indifference toward the God of the Hebrews points to his Jewish background, while aligning with his broader role in deceiving both Jews and Muslims. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 explains that a restraining force identified as the Holy Spirit and the Church currently holds back the full manifestation of the Antichrist. Once this restraint is lifted, the Antichrist will reveal himself fully and exert his power over the world. This period will be marked by great tribulation, 
but ultimately culminate in the Antichrist's defeat by Jesus Christ. The contrast between the ministries of Christ and the Antichrist emphasizes the urgency of accepting salvation through Jesus. As prophecies unfold, believers are called to remain vigilant, grounded in the doctrine of Christ, avoiding deception by false prophets and teachings. The final victory of divine justice over iniquity will underscore the importance of faith and the necessity of accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Antichrist. Theories of his emergence. One such theory is the billionaire man. This theory posits that the Antichrist will emerge as a billionaire, using his immense wealth to manipulate global systems and control media, religious and political leaders. The Book of Revelation, chapter 13, supports this by describing a beast with ten horns and seven heads, symbolizing control over nations and power structures. Verses 4, 8 highlight the Antichrist's authority over every tribe and nation, which would lead people to worship him. In today's world, billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos wield significant influence. They have been accused of being involved in apocalyptic plans such as implanting microchips, controlling the masses through social media, and having connections with global elites. Despite these accusations, no concrete or biblical evidence supports these claims. These ideas stem from personal interpretations of apocalyptic prophecies, and caution should be exercised to avoid confusion and fear. Also, being the religious leader, this theory suggests that the Antichrist will be an influential religious leader who unites various faiths into a singular world religion. He will gain trust through miracles and signs, presenting himself as a divine figure. However, as described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4, he will be a deceiver which warns of a rebellion and the revelation of the man of lawlessness. By appearing as a spiritual leader sent by God, the Antichrist will deceive many. His influence will extend beyond religion, using his perceived divine authority to manipulate global systems. This aligns with biblical warnings about false prophets performing deceptive miracles to mislead even the elect, if possible. Another is the being from another world. Another theory suggests that the Antichrist will present himself as a superior being from another world. This idea is based on the supernatural abilities described in the Bible, such as calling down fire and raising the dead. Unlike extraterrestrials from science fiction, this being would appear as an evolved entity capable of answering humanity's deepest questions. Biblical accounts, such as fallen angels mating with human women before the flood and angels visiting Lot and Abraham, lend credence to this theory. Moreover, the Old Testament describes encounters between divine beings and humans, reinforcing the idea that the Antichrist will mimic God's deeds. Thessalonians chapter 2 warn of these deceptions. Ancient cultures also describe encounters with beings from other worlds, adding to this narrative. This superior being could win over people and leaders by offering solutions to global problems and answering existential questions. Such a being would likely be idolized seen as a messianic figure bringing peace and salvation. This aligns with Satan's desire for worship and deception. Then there's the political leader theory. A widely debated theory among Bible scholars suggests that the Antichrist will emerge as a charismatic political leader capable of uniting nations under a single government. Promising peace and prosperity, this leader would attract billions of followers, fulfilling the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 about the Antichrist's presentation to the world. Daniel 7 describes a fourth kingdom that will dominate the earth, led by a powerful and charismatic leader. This leader will speak against God, oppressed believers, and attempt to change laws and times, coercing those who do not align with his principles. Historical figures such as Nero, Napoleon, John F., Kennedy, Mikhail Gorbachev, Ronald Reagan, and more recently, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Vladimir Putin, and King Charles III have been speculated to be the Antichrist. However, while the Antichrist may have political influence, the Bible does not explicitly guarantee that he will be solely a political leader. According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 to 4, the Antichrist will oppose and exalt himself over everything called God, setting himself up in God's temple and proclaiming himself to be God. This passage, written by the Apostle Paul, warns Christians about the deception that will occur before Jesus' return. One, two significant events are highlighted. 
the apostasy, widespread abandonment of faith, and the revelation of the man of sin or the Antichrist, who will commit sacrilege by blaspheming God in the Third Temple in Jerusalem. Then comes the artificial intelligence theory. A recent theory posits that the Antichrist could be linked to artificial intelligence, AI. This theory suggests that modern technology, especially AI, can be used to deceive and control humanity. AI could manipulate people's decisions and identities through data, chips, and implants, potentially creating false signs and wonders using holograms and virtual reality. The Blue Beam Project, a conspiracy theory, claims that NASA will implement a new world religion using advanced projection technologies to simulate the second coming of Christ, or an extraterrestrial invasion. This project supposedly aims to discredit existing religions, control minds through magnetic fields, and simulate an extraterrestrial threat to consolidate global power under the Antichrist. However, this theory is highly speculative and lacks substantial evidence. The Antichrist is described as a man who will rise against God, exalting himself above all. He will have significant political and religious influence, using deception and charisma to dominate the world. The Bible warns that the Antichrist will work with an ally to deceive people and prepare the world for his rule. So what do you think of the arrival of the Antichrist? Comment below your views and subscribe for more. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.